They say that your brain waves can be measured even in your little toe, which is a sign that the energy of your thoughts fills your whole body, fills your whole experience. We don't realize how much energy we're giving off, how much energy we're radiating, and what the quality of that energy is. It's only when you make the mind really, really quiet can you begin to sense this shadow radiation that gets put off. And to see how much it shapes your experience, how much it affects the experience of people around you. That's why the Buddha puts so much emphasis on the question of intention, because that's where the real energy lies, the intentions of the mind. Because what we experience is the not only the intentions themselves, but also the, the energy that they create, the ripple effect that they create, both in the present moment and in, from intentions in the past. And as those ripple patterns intersect and interfere, that shapes our experience. And one of the main lessons of meditation is just seeing how that happens. But even before you see it happen, the Buddha, the Buddha's training is to get you to start working with skillful intentions, both because they have a good effect on your life and also because it's through skillful intentions make it easier to see what's going on. The unskillful ones put up a lot of interference, make it hard to see. You do things and say things that are really unskillful and you don't know because it creates such turbulence. And this is why the Buddha teaches us to practice generosity, to observe the precepts, because the kind of intentions that go into that process are both skillful in and of themselves, and they allow us to see more and more what's going on, to gain an appreciation for how much our intentions do shape everything. So by the time, by the time we come to sit down and meditate, we've already had some experience in seeing the power of our intentions. and. The meditation becomes a laboratory for experimenting even more, in more detail, get a more subtle sense of what's going on, and also a more immediate sense, so that you begin to detect your intentions as soon as they, as soon as they arise, and you can do something about them if they're not skillful, or make them more skillful if they're relatively skillful, how to make them even more skillful. You notice this when you focus on the breath. Your perception of the breath is shaped by the intentions that you've had in the course of the day. The parts of the body that you tensed up in order to do this, in order to think about that, still leave a shadow in your experience of the body. You notice sometimes if you spent the day working, say, hammering or weeding. When you sit down to meditate, everything seems to be a process of hammering and weeding in the mind. Those are the leftover shadows of the intentions. And your sense of the body as a weeder or a hammerer is still lying around in there, too. So when you start out with the breath, you want to sort of cleanse these things out of your, your body as much as you can. This is why you work through the sensations of the breathing as systematically as you can and start noticing where the tension is, how you can relax it, so you can bring things back to normal. And it's from that state of normalcy, aware normalcy, that you begin to notice how the tension will build up again around a new thought. It makes it easier and easier to see what's going on in the present moment because you've got less and less residue holding over from the past. So work through the tension in the body. It doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you start with a point that's comfortable. You want to work from a position of strength. This sense of well-being, a sense of being secure. Once you've got that established, then you can let it spread through the different parts of your body, the different parts of your awareness. You might want to go through the body a couple of times, because each time you go through it, your perceptions get more and more refined, more and more subtle. 
In fact, you can get to the point where the breath and the body seems to stop. Then the question arises, well, where do you focus then? Well, focus on the stillness. It's still a, a type of energy in the body. It's simply that it's grown still. And from this point you begin to see other things that are even more refined, that your sense of the shape of the body or the sort of the boundary between inside and outside the body begins to dissolve. And you realize that that was part of an intention as well. And for the time being you can let it drop. It's not that you're going to totally lose your sense of the shape of the body. You can take it on any time you want to. But you begin to see that there's a choice that's involved there. You can sit with the body with a, as a sense of a mist of atoms, as we were talking about this afternoon. Or you can focus on the sensations that give it more of a shape. There are all these lots of potential sensations just waiting for us to work with here. When you see that, you begin to realize exactly how much your present intentions really do shape what you're experiencing. If you want there to be a shape, there are sensations that will conform to that, that will Verify the fact that there is a shape to the body, and you can make it happen. And the perceptions then influence the intentions, and the intentions influence the perceptions, and you can actually get yourself all tied up in knots. And some people feel like their bodies are almost made out of lead or some kind of metal. It gets so heavily solid this way. When it's too heavy like that, then you can turn your perception around and intentionally think of, intentionally focus on the sort of more open shapeless sensations, the space sensations that are there in different parts of the body, and then deal with them the same way you dealt with the breath. Let that sense of sh space permeate throughout the body, erasing the sensations that you had created to create a sense of shape. You realize it's not total creation. I mean, there are potentials there, but there's a question of which potentials you're going to work with, which ones you're going to you focus on to create the sense of shape, which potentials you focus on to erase it. But it's your choice. You can see this most clearly when the breath is still. When the breath is still moving, there tends to be a, the process of breathing in and of itself creates a shape for the body. But as John Lee recommends, as you let the breath energy open up to every pore, that allows the breath to calm down, calm down, calm down. Think of every pore in your skin opening up wide, all the muscles that tighten up the pores, allow them to relax. And you'll find that the breath will calm down radically. And it opens up the way for the sensations of space, the openness, you sort of the, the holes in your skin, allow the inner senses of inner sensations of space and the outer sensations of space to connect. And then you can take space as your object. So at the same time that you're practicing concentration and getting it more and more subtle and more and more refined, you're also learning interesting lessons about the role of perception, the role of intention, and in how you experience things. And you see how much your intentions really are an energy that creates all kinds of experiences. And that's a lot of what Buddhist insight is about, is seeing that, that role of intention. When they describe dependent core arising, there's one of the patterns they describe is of name and form and consciousness acting together to create all the processes that lead up to suffering. Well, intention is an important part of name. It's one of the major causal factors in how we experience things. And you can see it operating here as you practice concentration. You also see it as you try to take this state of well-being, this relaxed state, out into the world. On the one hand, you see the problem of maintaining it because all sorts of other intentions start getting in the way. You've got to deal with this person, deal with that person, deal with this situation. And the skill becomes how you maintain this inner sense of openness and well-being without letting the world trample all over it, or letting your intentions connected to the world trample all over it. And also how to protect it from the energies of other people. This is when you really pick up. When you're, when you're open like this, you, you sense other people's energies a lot more.
This is when it's important to think of the breath energy in the body as giving off a kind of radiation, a protective field, to prevent those other negative energies coming in to affect you. If you just leave yourself wide open, you really do pick up negative things from other people, so you've got to be careful. This is when you need a kind of barrier around you, a, pr a protective energy barrier. And the breath flowing throughout the whole body like this does provide that. Just be a lot, you know, alert to that potential. Learn how to maintain it. But as you do this, you'll find another effect happening as well, that your energy becomes a more positive energy on, the, on other people. The way people react to you will change. The influence you have on other people will become a better influence. And you begin to see that the effort that's put into maintaining this inner sense of openness and well-being while you're doing other things is not simply adding one more task onto all the other tasks you've got in the world, but it simplifies issues a lot. Try to make this your center of gravity. Make this the point from which you're operating, your position of strength. 